All right. Welcome to the new Decision Point training room. My name is Aaron Swenlin with my father, Carl Swenlin, and we're here to give you the update on what's happening in the market right now. I'll be diving into a couple of industry groups in the sectors, and then we will take your symbol requests at the end. So if you want to put your symbol requests in, use the Q&A box. If you want to chat amongst yourselves, go ahead and use that chat room. Just make sure when you put a comment in, in the chat room that you use the drop down menu that's above it so that you send it to everyone. Otherwise, it just goes to us and we, we do not monitor the chat room. We don't see that until maybe the end. So Q&A box is for your questions and symbol requests. And since Carl is in the room, I know he loves to take the questions. So definitely uh, put those in there if you've always wanted to ask him something since he's here. All right, uh, we are not registered invest investment advisors, so all trading decisions are your own. Anything we say in this trading room, particularly we talk about buy signals, sell signals, buy points, sell points, none of those should be considered calls to action. They are just really our opinion based on what we're seeing on the chart. Uh, I think that's all of the housekeeping that we need to do, Dad. So I'm going to pass the screen to you to give us the update on what's going on in the market currently. Okay. Let's uh, look at the signal table. We've got, yes. uh, we've got a number of buy signals uh, that we got last week and uh, in addition to the few that we had. Uh, in the intermediate term and the longer term, uh, Golden Cross uh, signals are still lagging uh, in terms of the buys. Um, I have a, yeah, we got a lot of, yes. we got a lot of signals last, all these turned to buy last week and there's only one that we're looking at right well there's only one left and that's the new york and i will look at that chart in a minute and on this uh, chart and table we've got the financials so let's take a look at the those charts uh, here's the new york um, stock exchange composite and uh, it's very close to a silver cross buy signal which is the 20 ema going up through the the 50 ema and then also the uh, financials, they're very close, not as close as at the NYA, but uh, they're very close to a uh, silver cross buy signal as well. The rest of them uh, are more or less headed for buy signals, but not nearly this close. We should see this, uh, in, you know, assuming the market can, can use to drift higher, we should see this uh, change uh, tomorrow or the next day. Okay, let's look at the, the market now. Here's the SPY. And we've got, uh, well, it was up at the beginning and now it's just slightly, slightly higher um, in, the, in the pattern here. Basically, I should have drawn a line across the, the top here. That would put us with a Excuse me, but I got a bearish it. rising wedge. Yes. Yes. Now, bearish in the short term, but it, we would expect that to break down, which, uh, yeah, after all this for a month, almost a month to almost two months worth of advance since the middle of June. Yeah, we've been, we've been waiting for this to, to roll over. Uh, don't, uh, don't know if that's the end of it. Uh, while I'm on this, why don't I just get into some of the indicators that we watch and main, mainly uh, our short-term indicators. That's the Swinland Trading Oscillator for breadth and volume. And uh, they are coming off tops. And here's a, a negative divergence here, which means this top is weaker than the prior top. and. Uh, I put it out to Aaron, I think it was Friday, that I thought the market has been acting very bullishly. Uh, we, here we are set up with, with uh, 
overbought readings on these indicators, and we should be getting a pullback out of that. But no, we're having we're not getting any sh show of weakness, and uh, uh, that's that is bullish. Now it doesn't mean it's bullish forever, but for the time being, we might be going uh, quite a bit higher. How much higher? Let's look at a. That's not the one I wanted. Uh, I wanted the one-year chart of the SPY. And then here's the declining tops line um, that basically will give us a uh, longer-term buy signal with the breaks through that. Uh, my experience says that if we get a breakout, that'll be a bear a bull trap, and uh, that'll be the end of it, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Going back to the indicators, in the intermediate term, they're very overbought. And uh, again, so we should start seeing a pullback uh, if if the bear is still out there breathing. Uh, <laughs> he's taken a break, at least he has been for uh, almost two months. A little bit of hibernation going on there, right. but yeah, I would I would be very careful at this point for sure. Okay, let's look at the dollar. The dollar is piddling along here sideways, and uh, my impression is that this line of support here will probably be violated. It looks to me like the the dollar is shifting to a downtrend. Gold benefits from that. Today it's up. Um, still hasn't exceeded last week's high. But I'm liking the looks of this. We've got this rising trend line and it's accelerating with this uh, rising trend line. So we don't want to get too far ahead of that because then we've got a parabolic situation. Okay. Yeah, the indicators look pretty good there, so. Yes, stochastics is not one of the ones I follow, but we've got the PMO uh, is still, it's below zero, but rising, and that's just a very good configuration on that. Um, you know what? We don't talk about discounts. Do you mind just giving a quick... Um you know what that's all about okay this this measures sentiment on gold and the there's a uh, a physical gold fund ph exclamation phy i'm sorry it's phys right yep that is physical uh, gold the sprout um physical gold fund i mean they own gold and it's a uh closed in fund, which means it trades like a stock and it can trade above net asset value and below net asset value. Currently is trading below net asset value. It's trading at a discount. So you can uh, buy, if you bought now, theoretically you're buying at a one and a half percent discount of the actual price of the, the actual value of the assets of that fund. So anyway, we keep track of this and it's uh, useful, I think, that basically it tells us sentiment stinks on gold and it has for a long time. I could go, let's let's go to the one-year chart on gold. And uh, again, we see it's pretty, uh, you know, stinky <laughs> last year. And, uh, and yeah, it's those, those um, you know, big... Uh, bearish uh, discounts, you know, when we get over like two on those discounts, you know, typically, you know, that, that tells us, uh, you know, really bearish sentiment. And a lot of times we'll get reversals off of that. Yeah. And it can see that the, the bearish sentiment is, it's persistent. Yes. <laughs> uh, very, very few times do you get above uh, zero where you get start trading at a premium and that's usually a time to, to head for the hills <laughs> not always not always but looking at the monthly chart 
you can see back as it was headed to, well, all-time highs at the time, uh, people were really, really into it. I mean, this is a 15, almost a 15% premium that people were paying for the gold in this fund. Wow. Yeah. So. Yep. But it's, yeah, I thought it's really interesting. A lot of people ask me about it. So I figured since we have you here, we could <laughs> get yeah, you to it's explain. It's good to talk about it once in a while because I know people look at that and, and if they haven't been with us a while, they don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> okay, this is uh, USO crude oil. And uh, it looks like it's trying to uh, bottom on this uh, support level here. Uh, I don't know how far down it might go. The, uh, it seems intuitive that it should be going higher. So you've got a, a, a you know overshoot and then an, an overshoot down in this direction. That's just the way markets move. Uh, they don't move exactly in balance with where they ought to be. Yes. <laughs> On bonds, uh, bottoming. For sure, looks like bottom, although it has violated this rising trend line. I'm not so much worried about <clears throat> the rising trend line as uh, the uh, lines of support and resistance here. How about the 10 year treasury yields? I know we have lots of people who follow that one very closely. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Wow, it's just such a strange chart. Right. Again, it's like the Fed is raising interest rates, but uh, longer term rates are drifting downward. And uh, basically, we're getting inversions. Well, where is that? Uh, oh, yes. The yield arrays. Yes. Yield array. Yes. Short term. <clears throat> the pretty charts. Actually, it looks like the longer term yields are <clears throat> headed higher again. Yeah, so, attempting the breakout. But certainly they've they've settled uh, for the last uh, couple of months. Yeah, I think the concern a lot of people have is how high those um, one month, you know, those really short term rates have gotten. Right. And uh, um, let's see. I I can't let <clears throat> find it easily. Let me look at here. <laughs> here we go. A dynamic yield chart. We keep a copy of this on our daily report, but you can see we've got um, an inversion here. This should be higher than this, but it's not. And again, an inversion uh, here with the twenty higher than the thirty-year yield. Okay, I want to look at Apple. <clears throat> We've got a, let's see, I better update that and see where we are right this minute. Okay, it's it started higher, but it's, it's lower now. Mm. And uh, it dropped from this, from its all time high down 30, 29%. Right now, it's, it's, it has been up. 30% from this low. So it's going to take probably 40% advance to get it back to the all-time highs. But this is where the action has been uh, since the middle of June and uh, is what's been elevating the market is these high-tech stocks. I'm not going to go through all of those right now. Let me see if there's any questions that I might Yes, be I should be answer. reading them, but I... I've been uh, rapidly listening to you. Um, let's see. So one of them, since you know you do gold, you know they're wondering. Um, Ico wants to know when when would we we enter gold? I know that you and I have both um, padded positions um, of late, um, but the question is, and I, I get this a lot on some of the you know the stocks. Hey, it's already gone up. You know when when should I enter? Is it too late to enter? Um, that sort of thing. I don't think it's too late on gold um, to enter. No, always enter, always enter way before 
it starts up. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's, that's, that's that whole rule. buy that's low, sell rule. high thing. It's so easy. That's why we're all here. <laughs> okay, yeah. And so, uh, no, obviously, for this current rally, this was a good time. The middle of July was a good time to be entering, uh, a, opening a position. And, you know, it's already... If you draw a line down through these tops, it's already exceeded the, the uh, declining tops line. So it's there's it's got a breakout in that regard. Mainly, I'd be looking at these these uh, lines of uh, support and resistance. But uh, uh, I'm this is a I think now is not a bad time to be entering. Mm -hmm. Could have been better by doing it here. Obviously, you're here, but the I think this is a good time. I think. Maybe this long, uh, bleak period is yes. over, and I think you know, it's done with, but that's just my opinion and my best guess. Yes. <laughs> okay, so that was one that I knew you could answer. There's not like, okay, here we go. Um, based on today's market readings, would you be tempted to take profits uh, on overbought winners today? On overbought winners? To t yes. So if, you know, it's a great day in the market, but, you know, a lot of people thankfully have some winners in their portfolios and they, they're they noticing on the chart that it's getting overbought. I don't have an example here exactly. Um, but, you know, the question is, okay, it's already, you know, PMOs overbought, you know, stochastics are overbought. Um, should we sell now? Because we're, you know, sell into strength as we often say. Okay, well, again, this is a guess. And if we look at the intermediate term chart, we should we should start back down uh, just any time now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean this this chart is just totally overbought and it's it's as intermediate term, so I would expect to see things go lower in bull markets or in a bull phase of the market it can overcome these uh, overbought situations and continue to go higher. Um, I, th I think we're in a bear market and I think uh, caution is the, the way to go. Yep. All right. Let's see. Um, here's a question I think you can answer with me and it, it still follows in this gold um, area, which really I think is one of your expertises. So, um, I, and I have an opinion on this, so I'm curious about yours. Would you prefer um, GLD or gold to um, gold miners, GDX right now? Um, they said, you know, they go hand in hand, if you will. So if gold's looking good, you know, what do we think of gold miners? And I know we do have a gold miners chart. Um, yeah, you know, I, I, I don't know what your opinion is, but really my thought is that, yes, they do go hand in hand. And the gold miners often have an advantage because they, they also um, sway by the winds of the market. And if the market's going higher, usually with gold and the market going higher, they're going to do well. I think it's a great bottoming formation, but I'm st I just don't trust it still. Um, I, I see that resistance coming up. Um, what are your thoughts? Well, I'd say it certainly looks like a good time. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it could, it could, I don't know how it could. Today's look. breakout uh, looks pretty encouraging. I have right. to say. We've got a, the PMO is, uh, bottomed and moving higher and it's got a way, a long way to go before it becomes overbought again. Mm -hmm. uh, don't have anything on OBV. The the Silver Cross and Golden Cross index are both <clears throat> uh, flat. I mean, they're just as bad as they can get. So uh, that doesn't mean they're going to bounce because this is a uh, this is a, a finite range in this, and it <clears throat> it can be flatter than this. <clears throat> chart uh, recognizes it right. Just tells you, it just tells you um, above moving averages and and below moving averages type of thing. 
So anyway, we but we've got some good action on the um, stocks above their twenty. And notice today we've broken out, and uh, we, we would like to see stocks above its twenty breaking out or getting close to to this uh, previous high. Stocks above fifty is moving higher, and as well as the stocks above the two hundred. So it's looking good to me. Mm -hmm. But I don't. I stay away from uh, the the miners because it's just a little too volatile for for my um, yes taste, and I and I prefer the uh, physical gold. Right, right. No, I have to say. I mean, I have not been trusting gold miners, but I haven't seen the chart this morning, and I have to say, I do like that little breakout that's going on right now. The only issue, guys, is that overhead resistance. You know, the fifty days coming. And there's a zone of resistance, if you will, that uh, gold miners are going to have to force their way through. But, you know, and then look at the EMAs, you know, 20, 50 and 200 are configured terribly negatively with lots of margin in between. So we really can't expect to see the silver or golden cross improve for quite a while. I mean, most of the gold miners look exactly like this. So we're kind of stuck with you know, how they're doing above their 20 and 50 and whether we're getting enough of uh, that thrust upward for them. And it's starting to look a little bit better, but, you know, we got fooled before on that last uh, breakout from the declining trend. So, you know, you get burned once, you tend to be a little more cautious the next time out. And here's a reverse head and shoulders pattern right here. Indeed. One, two, three. So, uh, and it's broken out above that. And I, I, yeah, I just, I, I think it looks good. But just, yeah. yeah, no, this looks better than the last time. Uh, okay, so there you go. So preference wise, I mean, you know, dad's more, um, it's not so much that the charts look that different, but you, you're like, you just like to be in the physical gold versus being in a, um, in a gold miner. And I have to say, you're absolutely right. People need to think about it. If you're going to be in a gold miner, I'm going to be talking about renewable energy and biotechs. You just have to have the ant acid, you know, really close by because it's going to be a wild roller coaster ride. You're going to have some days where you're just like, yes. And then another day and you're like, oh, no, this is just terrible. Why am I in this stock? So just be ready for that. You no, know, I really, really like this chart. It's the kind of chart that I like. Yes, I like to buy after they've been stressed to the max, and that's certainly the case. So you've got a, a bear stack of of uh, moving averages here with the with the short one at the bottom, and and to me it's it, it's uh, starting to show improvement. I mean, I love this. I love yeah. this chart. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is exactly right. Dad and I sort of um, that's where they we sort of divide a little bit. And that is, I'm always waiting for confirmation. I'm, I'm, I wait all the time. And I know for you, it's like, I don't want to wait. I want to get right in. Um, but I just, it's my trading style. I'm a mo momentum trader, which automatically kind of puts you behind the ball a little bit. Cause you're always waiting for that momentum shift um, before you do anything. And then I always add those confirmations. I need to see breakouts above resistance and that sort of thing. So I, I do like this chart, but I worry about that overhead resistance. But, you know, I get it from mom. I'm, I'm really good at worrying. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I think that was about it. Oh, and silver. I think we often talk about gold, but we forget about silver. Um, we could do that really quick. Let me uh, find silver. Wrong list. Let me find the right list. Ah, yes. Our sure. ETF tracker. I need to, I need to get silver on the main list because we do, uh, we're often called upon to. Yes, yeah. <laughs> it so seems like we every week with the silver chart. Ooh. And here's another um, um, chart that um, this is for Central Fund of Canada. Actually, uh, CEF is now Sprott's Physical Silver Fund. Ah, so yeah, that they bought that. Oh, okay. I didn't realize it was. Um, it used to be mixed. Am I right? Um, 
Well, no, it, the, the Central Fund of Canada has had, you know, and, and this now, um, it's, it had a mix of about 50% of its assets in gold and 50% in silver. So with this, we get a, looking at the uh, Sprott, I'm going to call it Central Fund. And if yeah, we, right, right. Looking at the, this uh, premium discount, uh, they've got this gives us a good idea of what's going on with silver, although not the best because we've got gold mix in there. But we've look, seen gold is like at one and a half ish, and, and the rest of us would be the silver. So gold and silver sentiment is down. Of course, it would be, wouldn't it? But look, yeah. you know, but again, here we've got. Um, Definite yeah. breakout and moving higher. So, I mean, this looks as good as is the gold chart to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that kind of cup and handle ish, you know. Um, nice look. So, metal's really starting to look pretty good here. All right. So, it's my turn. Let's do a little bit of sector analysis. And then I will be diving into the biotechs because I had been emailed about that group and then uh, talk about renewable energy, which is just taking off right now. It's one of the bright spots in my portfolio. So let's see if we can get brighter here moving forward on renewable energy, which I think we can. All right. So I'm going to grab this screen. All right, so hopefully you are seeing the SPY chart. So Dad already talked very much about this, so I'm going to move into our sectors. And what I do is I view all and I use a candle glance. Uh, a lot of people have asked me for my candle glance style. I am more than happy to send this along with my industry group, all of my regular chart styles, just send an email to support at decisionpoint.com. But remember, these are only useful if you are a Stock Charts member, uh, extra and above, So, because um, then you can save your chart styles. So uh, let me know, but send me your Stock Charts email address. Otherwise, this is sort of a fruitless effort to send you the chart styles. All right, so this is a great look of all of the sectors. It gives us a really good idea of what's going on. It's sort of like the chart that I showed in the, the free article over the weekend of the FANG stocks, or, or our top 10, as we call them. Um, and really, there's just, they're really looking bullish. It's, you just can't ignore that. Some of these look a little weaker than others. But let's take a peek at what's going on. So comp services has been losing favor on the relative rotation graph. But you can see that it is trying to make a move. It's just really struggling. But ultimately, XLC is starting to make that move. I think there are better choices in as far as sectors to invest in than comp services. But, you know, again, the PMO getting positive. Uh, consumer discretionary really was super hot. Um, last week, not last week, the week before, you can see that big gap up move. We're now trading above the 200 day EMA. But I have to say, and fortunately, I have my reading glasses on, I'm seeing a lot of long wicks on what would be candlesticks here. A lot of these trading in the lower part of their range on the day, which does lead me to err on the side of caution, but we do see some of these breakouts have occurred. Whether we're going to finish above these EMAs will be, you know, anybody's guess, but it's looking a little bit weaker than it did first thing this morning. Staples kind of did a pullback here, kind of a little less exciting um, than some of these uh, other sectors that really started to break out. Financials being one, you talked a lot about the Silver Cross that uh, is going to probably occur today. Healthcare really kind of settled in, um, not doing you know a whole lot here. But like I said, we'll look at biotechs, which are certainly a bright spot. Indus, uh, industrials, I've been watching this group fairly closely because it seems ready for another breakout. And it does look like that is occurring, but again, hitting that resistance level and turning back down. So there is some caution to be had out there that we need to consider. Uh, materials making a move, probably a lot to, uh, to do with gold and silver doing well. Real estate, 
nice breakout above the 200, but it does look like we're getting another failure as it moves to the lower part of its range. Technology got above that 200 day EMA last week, really like the look. Uh, and again, staying above that 200 day EMA, I think that this is probably one of the better sectors uh, moving forward into the week. That's the one I'm going to be watching. Utilities kind of hitting uh, overhead resistance, uh, consolidating a little bit here. Um, I have a couple utilities in my portfolio, kind of a, you know, a safety zone, if you will, in, in exposure. So far, those are doing pretty well, but I'm watching them really closely because you can see sort of this a little bit of a roundedness here at this top, which has uh, has me concerned just a bit. All right, so let's run into these two uh, industry groups I've been talking about. So what I'm gonna do is go to the uh, industry summary here on the homepage. I believe this is available even to the free members. I, I couldn't say for sure. So what they have here is uh, each sector, and then I can just click through the different industry groups and see what looks interesting. So we're gonna look specifically at biotechs and at solar. So um, let's go down into those groups, but you can see that uh, when you get into these, some of the groups tend to be doing better than others. And so it's a really good measure if you're looking at a sector that's doing well is to, to go in and drill down and find out really where is that strength. We see a lot of um, um, you know, nice moves in financials, but you, know, you wanna go through here and see which ones actually look the most promising. So healthcare, let's get to biotechs. So really nice breakout today. I wanna talk about biotechs and look at this chart in particular. And actually I'm gonna put in XBI cause I know you can trade XBI and a lot of people are a little more interested in what's going on there. So nice breakout, but everyone was asking me, well, you know, um, biotechs are doing just so well. And, uh, you know, this group is, you know, on fire. Yes, I've liked biotechs for a while, but you can see as a group, they really only started to make a move as far as relative strength last week. You know, biotechs were really, you know, they had a nice move, a lot of consolidation, but then we got this bounce off the 50 and it's just been going to the races. And on Friday, we got the breakout above the 200. So I have highlighted biotechs in the past in Decision Point Diamonds. So for those of you who are subscribers or whoever subscribes, um, all of my uh, historical reports are in the DP Diamonds um, uh, archive. So you can get a copy of all of my diamonds, whatever I've presented over the last two and a half, three years on our site when you become a subscriber. So I can talk about all this, but you can actually go and check my work <laughs> by going back and looking. So That's I love good. this breakout. Here's the problem we're having now with a lot of stocks that I'm noticing today. And I'm going to put this on a five minute just so we can have a, a better perspective. I gotta get my face out of here and it's in the way. <laughs> okay, so this is the problem. So we have a filled black candlestick. These are uh, bearish candlestick formations. It's a shooting now, star. Shooting star, yes. And there, that's a problem as well. Um, the filled black candlestick shooting stars are negative patterns. Now, a candlestick pattern is a one day pattern. So don't think that it's calling a pivot point for sure and then it's gonna continue. No, these are one day formations. So right now this is looking a little bit bearish here as we got the pop and now we're starting to see prices move lower. It's a filled black candlestick because the bears are winning the day, but overall the price of the stock is still up. So you can see here, the bulls pulled it. Um, upward bears are pulling it back down, but still above yesterday's close. So that's why these filled black candlesticks can be so dangerous because it tells you that during the day, the bulls started to lose, the bears started to gain some momentum. And so that's why a lot of times when you see these type of candlesticks, you're going to see that reversal. So we do have that a little bit of a bearish problem on this chart right now, but ultimately we don't know how it's going to finish. We could see that black candlestick go away. We could see um, prices um, 
close closer to uh, above the open. But we do see that uh, XBI itself is overbought based on the RSI. So price is overbought. PMO kind of overbought. I say kind of because the bottom of the range is minus 7.5. And we're currently reading not even at 5.0 on the PMO. So it's not particularly overbought. It looks that way on the chart. Uh, and again, we're getting that nice relative strength. I think my issue right now, just looking at um, the biotech chart here is today's action. But overall, I mean, this is a strong move to the upside. I like the biotechs here. Uh, I think that we still have some more upside, but we need to be careful because here is that overhead resistance. And now we have this filled black candlestick. So maybe in the very, very short term, we might see a bit of consolidation um, maybe a pullback here toward the 200 day EMA. But overall, I mean, I think the chart is still very positive for biotechs. So what we can do is, and this is what I do in my diamond mine, is we go and we find uh, an index or uh, industry group, I mean, that we like, and then we go in and look at what the stocks are within it. And again, this is something you can do here in that industry summary. So we're going to go down to healthcare here and go to biotechs. And then if you click right here, this gives me the list of stocks within the biotechs. I like to sort it by scooter, but you can sort it by capitalization. Sometimes that's going to help you from, you know, dealing with some of the volatility that you will in biotech stocks. Uh, I would also say that if you get into a biotech, really watch that chart and pay attention to the indicators because just because that industry group is doing well, a lot of these biotechs can travel very quickly in the opposite direction. So you really wanna make sure you're in a stronger one. But here are some of the large caps. You can see it's also sorted by the scooter. So just you know, off the top of my head, I'm thinking Amgen, not looking that great. You can see that if I hover over, I can get a look at what that chart looks like. And I have to say that looks a little bit more interesting to me. It does have the issue of overhead resistance, but so does XBI. And look at the, whoops, excuse me. So I look at the performance of the group against the SPY, and then I look at the performance of the stock against the SPY. And you can see that... <laughs> <laughs> it, it never fails. I can see my dad cringing over there. <laughs> Hang on just a second. Can you fill the space, Dad? I'll be right back. <laughs> okay. Um, let me share a screen and see what I can do here. And I'm not on that subject at this point. Let us just take a look at what this, the market is doing. Uh, let's get up to the daily chart, and uh, we've got a um, we've got a reversal on the market. Not heavy duty, hard uh, something to worry about, but we do we're, we're getting the kind of action that I am relieved to see since we're so overbought in the intermediate term and in the in the short term on our indicators. So I definitely need to get a, a top for that formation there, because that is definitely a, a rising wedge, which will resolve down, down most likely. So have, right. you, have you killed the dogs? Yeah, the dogs have been uh, put away, <laughs> sort of. <laughs> okay, so I was explaining how I do the bottom of my chart. This is the, um, so group to spy industry or stock stock to the spy relative strength but then i do the stock to the industry group and this tells me if i'm getting one that's a leader in that group or whether it's one that's just not participating and in this case you can see that we do have a nice move here on bgne so i have to say that that chart looks pretty good all right i'm going to run out of time here and i want to make sure that i have time for the um Symbol request, but let's. I promised in uh, to look at renewable energy, so I'll look at that very quickly, and then we can get right on into those symbol requests, which I know are 
out there. So here is the solar chart, uh, pretty much on a move to, uh, you know, very parabolic, <laughs> or at least a vertical rally here. So I like this area. Currently, of course, big filled black candlestick uh, showing up here as the reversal is occurring today. But overall, I mean, this group looks pretty strong and the relative strength was just starting to kick in uh, at the end uh, about two weeks ago. So that's when we really started to see that that move, the big gap up probably will continue higher. I'm just guessing I don't study fundamentals, but I know that um, the, the um, renewable energy push by the Biden administration is going to continue to help these electronic vehicles, renewable energy equipment, et cetera. So I do like this industry group still. And if we go into it, I really like to do it by capitalization <laughs> on this particular group. So Sedge Solar Edge Technologies doesn't look so good. You can see that huge pullback. And when the industry group is doing well, it was not. Enphase is looking pretty good with a nice big breakout. First Solar is another one that I often um, talk about in diamonds. Uh, again, we're going to see these filled black candlesticks because of the way that uh, the trading is moving right now currently in the market with uh, pullbacks everywhere, but still prices higher on the day. So those are just a few that uh, I do like. Sunrun is making a move as well, breaking out above resistance. Uh, this is where you can see three filled black candlesticks in a row didn't hurt. So they don't always turn out with a downside, but notice filled black candlestick, filled black candlestick. So you do need to be very careful when you do see these. All right, time for some symbol requests. What do we got, Dad? Well, starting with KWEB. All right, China Internet. All right, so technology is doing well here in the US, but certainly not seeing on this particular ETF. Um, I don't like the look of this chart at all. Uh, there's nothing really appealing here. I mean, if you're looking at this on the short side, yeah, this looks pretty good. Uh, but you can see relative strength just tanking here. Stochastics haven't even been able to get into positive territory, and they're pretty sensitive and can usually make that move. So to see this for this long, um, not a good, uh, not a good look. And then RSI has been negative the same way all that time. So. I don't see anything here. Maybe we have a, a falling wedge. I'll just do this really quickly, but I doubt it. Mm, yeah, I guess we do have a falling wedge, but the rest of the chart tells me not to expect a breakout just yet. Failed here, failed there. So uh, I'm not liking this chart. I don't think it's even worth a look on that five minute chart. About All right, um, let's do it. Let's keep moving. PRPH. PRPH. All right. Definitely making a move to the upside here after a really bad decline. I don't know if that's earnings related, what could be uh, related to this. I would just be very careful here. Notice that here's what could be a left shoulder and a head, and we are starting to head down right here at that left shoulder, we could be forming a right. But I do like the way this has moved up. It's starting to uh, see a little bit of action here between stochastics rising, PMO flattening. It is showing some uh, strength against the group, but pharma has really as a group just not been performing that well. And again, you know, you have to think about the fact that a stock is is 50% of its move is usually attributed to its sector and its industry group. So if the industry group isn't doing well, you're already fighting some gravity that's going to be pulling your stock down and seeing that group is underperforming to such a degree. I would be very careful with this one. I can see how you want to catch this reversal right away. It's reverse flag, maybe. <laughs> Yes, could be a reverse flag. I mean, there's a lot of things on here. Yes, it's got plenty of upside potential here. I mean, if it can get back up there, we're talking about a 40% move, but I just don't see the strength on this chart that would bring it there at this point. Okay, how about XLE? Ah, yes. Well, since we have the chart here, 
with the under the hood indicators. So I've been very bullish on energy and I kind of got burned, if you will, uh, on this breakout right here. I really like the breakout. Uh, the participation was starting to improve. Um, you know, we had this moving, you know, back up into these, what we'd consider overbought uh, indicators. But in this case, we were talking participation that can be, you know, a long time that you can hold overbought participation readings. So that's something to keep in mind. I mean, right back here, 32 days of trading and it stayed overbought with participation. So reverse I like energy. Head, it's making that shoulders. reversal. Reverse I'm sorry. Head and shoulders. Reverse yes. head and shoulders. Yeah. Yeah. There's your head. There's left shoulder ish, right shoulder ish. So it's very, um, it's a comp. I would call no, it a complex I was looking, one. I was looking uh, from January to July. Oh, okay. Out. Yeah, the head being the low in uh, in July. Okay. The, the right, the left shoulder being uh, earlier in the in the year, but uh, yeah. Yeah. I'd say so. That, that looks it, pretty good. Yeah, I, I really like this sort of cup with handle look. It's bouncing off of um, support. I'm still a fan of energy. I, I don't have a good reason because when you look at these indicators, maybe not a great um, look here, but we are seeing participation starting to move up. Um, energy, of course, is uh, doing well today. I like oil. I think that we're going to see that move. I just think I kind of got burned on this um, breakout here. You know, I waited for my confirmation, got some confirmation, but it just, it didn't work out. We got the pullback, but now I think we're, Looking pretty good here, head, yes, left shoulder, right shoulder, reverse, kind of a nice bottom looking formation. So I am still um, bullish on energy, but uh, I reserve the right to change if that PMO completely tops under the zero line. Okay, right. how about uh, MPWR? Ah, manpower, yes. Monolithic power. I always think of it as manpower because of the, the um, <laughs> semiconductors. So I would expect semiconductors to be doing really well. I was surprised this morning when I was looking at the charts that semiconductors were not doing so hot today. Um, and part of that is, you know, again, with the, the bill that I heard was passed, I, again, I need to study my news a little better before I walk in here. But the idea is that money is being poured into the chip um, makers to help with supply. And, and, you know, we're having all these issues, um, getting enough uh, computer hardware, et cetera. So I expected to see the semiconductors really kicking it um, and continuing to do so. And today, really, it's just we're doing a little bit of consolidation here, which makes sense. We broke through this area of resistance. It's doing some consolidation. None of the indicators look that bad here. You can see um, nice outperformance here by monolithic. I mean, if you're going to be in a semiconductor, this looks like one of the ones you would want to uh, make that move in. But yeah, overall, you can see semiconductors performing relatively well. But I, the relative strength is starting to fail a little bit today. And I suppose I should talk a little bit about our five minute chart. This is where we do our entries and exits. So if you liked manpower, this is what we would do is to see when is the best buy point and sell point. Conservative buy point comes when you get a five minute PMO crossover with a positive five minute RSI. So that's your entry points in a conservative way. And again, mechanical. So you have to take a lot of other things into account, but just mechanical, um, they tend to work out fairly well. Those buy points, sell points are typically right when the PMO turns over. As soon as you start to see some negative momentum, more than likely a good time to exit. So I don't need a whole lot of reason to exit a stock. I need a lot more reason to enter it, which is why I have um, the crossover with positive RSI. Certainly you can go with more aggressive entries when the PMO turns up or the RSI gets positive, but typically this is um, gonna serve you well. And as you can see, we're at a buy point just right now. The PMO is crossed over and the RSI just went positive. So this would be a conservative buy point on this breakout, which does look pretty good, I have to say. Okay, right. how, how about uh, ALB? 
A L B Albermall. Yep. Look at how good I am about getting these. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, nice big double bottom, but man, I that's okay. So let me, I need to annotate here because whenever I see kind of an unusual chart pattern, I want everybody to understand it. So this is what we call a megaphone. Megaphones mean that you're increasing volatility as, as you move ahead. Volatility is rarely your friend just right out the gate. So when I see this kind of a pattern, I hesitate right away because it tells me that, yes, I'm making that big breakout, but now I'm more vulnerable to an even lower drop than before, just because of the way the volatility is increasing. That's not to say that this is a bad chart. <laughs> this is just to keep you um, in the know, if you will. So I like the breakout, don't like the volatility going on here, but the indicators are starting to look really nice. Um, I would hope they would on a three and three quarter percent move to the upside, but we're getting a bit of a breakout here. It did pull back like the whole market is, but I really like the way this PMO is acting with the kind of a bottom above the signal line. You can see stochastics were heading down, but flattening out. I mean, their relative strength is improving for the group, for the stock. Um, you know, it's, it looks pretty good. What's our upside potential to the next resistance level? A little, you know, 10 and a half percent. I often will do that. I will look at where we are and if it can get to the next resistance level, how much would I make? So that's one of kind of my rules of thumb. So a 10% plus move, that, that makes it very interesting to me. And I think the chart looks pretty good here. I'll just take a quick peek at entries and exits here. Yeah, not, not any entry at this point. If we do see that PMO turn up, that would be an aggressive entry. And of course, as I said, the mechanical conservative entry crossover with positive RSI. So the last buy point you see came in here pretty much on the gap up the open. You're going to find that happens a lot, but you'll also find out that when you get those gap ups on the open, you usually will see a positive close. We have a question here. Oh, a top to this bull market, the spy bull market, and I don't think we need to go at a chart, but yes, uh, I, I think we we could be topping down right right at this. We're due right now. Yeah, you know, with all the indicators we have, so I that's what I've been looking for. And I, yeah, if it's going to happen, it's going to be right about now. In the uh, survey, uh, I took I said for this week bearish. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, we come in opposite a lot of times, but this week, uh, I think we were the same. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, neutral at best. Um, but like I said, we've been, you know, acting very bearish here and we do have a lot of bullishness out here that we cannot ignore. So, uh, you know, we're cautiously bullish, but ultimately, if we're going to get the breakdown, this is where it's going to be. And I think that's what bothered me a lot because we saw very similar action, big move, consolidation, thought everything was looking good, and then we had failure. So that's what keeps me very cautious right now. Okay, All right. Let's, try let's try IPO. All right. I believe that's the ETF. Yeah. We cover this one in our ETF tracker. Just a uh, Throw out there the volume very low on this one. So just keep that in mind. Really nice breakout here. The next resistance level, it's already gotten above. So where's the next level? It's going to be way up here or at the 200. So at the 200, we're still looking at an over 16% gain. And this one does have a very good look to it. The um, relative strength picking up. We like to see stochastics above 80 and remaining above 80. If they drop below, that's usually a bad sign. But as long as they're staying above 80, you'll see some rise. So at this point, I do like the look of it. Okay, MVIS. Microvision. All right, hit overhead resistance here and is pulling back. And it's, that's a look I don't like. Um, stochastics turning down back below 80. But we are seeing some nice outperformance by the stock itself against the group and the SPY. But I'm noticing that the group is starting to lose a little bit of um, relative strength. So this has hit resistance and it's pulling back. 
If it stays above the 200, I think it would be um, pretty good here. But there are just a lot of things that are starting to, to crumble on this chart. I would definitely want to make sure it stays above that 200. Um, as far as getting in now, I mean, I suppose this could end up being sort of a flag formation, but I, I'm just, I, I'm not uh, enamored with this chart, to be honest. Okay, LNG. Uh, we talked about this one a couple of weeks ago. All yeah, right, this, Ooh, this nice breakout. One. It's probably because I got out back here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's just how it works <laughs> for for not only you but for me as well um it's not always a, a bed of roses in my portfolio uh but rsi looking great i just got spooked when the pmo started turned down and of course look at this it is definitely making its move back we are against overhead resistance but currently it's trading above that level Nice flag look here with the big burst on this particular rally. And now this rally bottom above the signal line. Uh, this looks like the beginning of a new move to the upside. And I'll look at this five minute just really quickly because it does look interesting for entry. Uh, no entry right now. Looks like you'll get a better buy point. Um, PMO, five minute PMO still moving downward. And five minute RSI now in negative territory. So looks like you might get a better buy point. But if we start to see a rebound, you can see this is a pretty strong support level. So a rebound here might have you uh, on a more aggressive entry when that PMO flattens or even turns up. I think that would be um, not so bad. SGML. Okay, not familiar. Sigma lithium. Wow, lithium looking good, at least for this particular stock. Really nice breakout. Um, it, it actually has um, a tail instead of a wick, which means that price is trading in the top of that range. Nice breakout. Boy, I like this chart. I think the only thing that makes me unhappy is the fact it's overbought. But then I can look back at history and its personality tells me it can hold overbought conditions for, you know, this was 14 trading days back there where it was overbought. So the PMO is rising nicely. Um, I mean, the, the only thing that could be of trouble is, like I said, overbought RSI and um, relative strength of the group is sort of ho-hum. But boy, this one is definitely an outperformer as against the group. As far as history, it doesn't have much. You notice that the 200 EMA is uh, awfully short. So that means there's not much data uh, in that. That's the weekly chart. So, yeah. yes. So we don't even on the weekly chart, we're just now starting to see a PMO. So unfortunately, that's not very helpful. But again, this breakout does look really encouraging here, I have to say. Um, lithium being in materials, we're starting to see gold and silver looking good. That could uh, be a part of it. Okay, we've got about a minute and a half. All right, I think we have room for one more. Try uh, ENPH. Ah, Enphase. So this is in renewable energy. We kind of talked about this earlier. Um, big bearish engulfing candlestick and RSI very overbought and starting to fall um, below, but that's good. We need it to get a little less overbought. Not liking the performance though against the group. And we've seen some nice solar stocks that are having a pretty good day. Um, I think I saw for solar how it was having a good day. Yeah, it's up 6%. So when you see a group that's doing that well, and then you end up with a stock looking like this, um, again, look at the underperformance against the group. Not where you wanna be. There are better choices. You can make better choices. And that my friends is the end of today's trading room. We want to welcome you. Uh, we want to say goodbye and thank you for joining us. If you want to attend live, there is a link um, in YouTube. If you're watching this on YouTube below, then you can join us live, ask those questions, get your simple request out there. Uh, other than that, I'm going to say good luck and good trading. Bye-bye. Say, say goodbye, Dad. No. <laughs> All right. We'll talk to you again next week. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. 
Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.